Good evening, welcome to my laboratory. The purpose of this demonstration will be to compare the current readings obtained from a non-inductive resistor uh, mounted as a Kelvin probe and another uh, ordinary wire wound what we call concrete power resistors there. Both of these resistors are one ohm resistors and as you can see they're in series so they'll be carrying the same current, won't they? So what I've got here is I've got the Kelvin probe with the shield here and the center conductor here and this is going to the channel 2 of the oscilloscope and that's going to be read, there's no attenuation in this probe so that one's going to be read at 2 volts per division okay on channel 2 which is that channel right there and that's where its baseline is going to be okay and on channel 1 here I've got an ordinary oscilloscope probe uh, also set to no attenuation okay this is on, I don't know if you can read that, it's on the 1x side okay no attenuation and I'll be hooking that probe across this 1 ohm resistor with its ground reference here just like the Kelvin ground reference and the probe end here so its current direction will be inverted from this but they're both carrying the same magnitude of current because they're in series, right? Okay, and then that is the current sense resistor for the Q2 portion of the Ainsley circuit, right? Now I'll be taking the function generator isolated, okay? The function generator's outputs are isolated, all right? But first, what I want to do is use the Fluke multimeter here, the old Fluke, the old venerable Fluke 83, to show you the resistances of these guys. If I can do it with one hand. You have no idea how hard it is. I'm right-handed, but I'm operating the camera with my right hand. So there's 1.2 ohms indicated for this resistor, right? And one point two ohms indicated for the non-inductive resistor right and point two ohms indicated for the test leads themselves right so those are both one ohm resistors to the nearest tenth of an ohm right am I right do are we agreed huh? 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 okay so now I'm going to take the channel 1 oscilloscope probe here and I'm going to hook it to the wire, wire wound resistor by like that right and now I'm going to take the function generator output here and I'm going to connect the black wire to the battery side of the current sense resistor so that the function generator currents are deliberately not included in the readings, right? This allows current through the function generator to bypass the current sense resistor, right? This is the quote unquote wrong orientation, but it is the same orientation that Ainsley used for all of all of her data and all of her demonstrations until the latter part of the August, 20, uh, August 11th, 2013 demo. The red lead goes again to the source pin of the MOSFET and the source pin has nothing else connected to it, right? So let's follow the circuit now. The gate of the MOSFET is connected to the end of the current sense wire, right? back to the battery. The source, or I'm sorry, the drain of the MOSFET is the red wire, goes through the 5 ohm resistor load to the positive pole of the 12 volt battery stack. <coughs> right? So that's that's the whole circuit, right? Alright, now let's see what happens when we turn on 
the function generator drive. Okay. Now I think you can see what this screen is showing you. This screen is showing you that the current sensed by the wire wound 1 ohm resistor, the concrete resistor, is much, much greater than the current sensed by the non-inductive resistor on my little uh, improvised Kelvin probe. Okay, you see that? And of course the magnitude of that current is determined by the function generator setting. Right? You see that? Those are those both of those traces are displayed at two volts per division, indicating the voltage drop across a one ohm resistor. Except this resistor is an ordinary power resistor, and this resistor is a special non-inductive resistor. Right? And now, since I have my function generator isolated, there's no ground loop possible, I can hook up the black lead of the function generator on the correct side, the transistor side of the current viewing shunt, in this, in this situation. And the waveforms that I get are the same. The magnitudes are a little bit different. But still, as you can see, I get much, much more magnitude, amplitude of oscillations with the uh, non I mean, with the with with the wire wound concrete resistor I get huge oscillation magnitudes huge indicated currents and with the non inductive resistor I get much smaller indicated currents okay which one do you want to believe huh I know which one Ainsley wants to believe and I know which one I believe and finally I've got the full 72 volt battery stack there red black, red, black, red, black, red, black, red, black, red to the Kelvin probe, ordinary current sense unit. Okay, and the uh, channel one probe is connected on the transistor side. There's the function generator input lead. I can put that on the back all the way over back to the main battery side I guess there. Okay. Oops. Okay. So that's there. Everything else is wired just as before. You can see what the connections are at the MOSFET. Okay. So let's go back to the oscilloscope and turn up the function generator amplitude okay and once again you can see that the inductive resistor is indicating one two three four five six that would be almost twelve volts of drop across a one ohm resistor okay and then here we have the non-inductive resistor and these are both indicating the same current because they're in series, okay? The same real currents are flowing through both of these resistors. And the function generator, 72 volts, people, 72 volts. Oh. I swear this is like shooting fish in a barrel. Thank you for watching.